Hello viewers, today I am going to take you through an operation which is called safe surgical dislocation of hip. Now this operation is used for intracapsular, intraarticular fracture of femoral head uh, with in its isolation or with associated posterior wall fracture. Now it is a challenging operation but my goal today is to take you step by step in a way that you feel confident and in doing this procedure and I am sure after watching this video you should be able to do this procedure in a safe manner. Now, if you are visiting my channel for the first time, please do subscribe as you will find many useful videos which will be extremely handy in your clinical practice. So, my goal today is to take you step by step as how to do safe surgical dislocation of a hip. So, this is our patient. He has got history of road traffic accident and if you can see, he has got a subluxed uh, right hip, uh, there is a posterior superior wall fracture, there are small uh, incarcerated uh, fragment into his acetabulum. So our goal today is to remove this incarcerated fragment, see if this is fixable to fix it and then do a posterior wall reconstruction. So position for uh, this surgery is like uh, your position for a hip replacement or hemiarthroplasty, so the patient is on a lateral position, we have got the side support um, and of course I will be standing on the side I am operating, um, so my next step will be to show you the skin incision. So this is, this is what I do when I do any operations across the hip, so this is the tip of the greater trochanter, this is the front part of the GT, this is the posterior aspect of the GT and this is roughly the femur I have drawn. Now when you do a hip replacement, this incision is slightly posterior for this, a surgical safe dislocation, this is almost straight vertical incision. So that is our marking of skin incision. So skin, the incision is pretty straightforward, so nothing special about it. Um, the superficial dissection is same like as in you do for a hip replacement, so we will be dividing the skin, subcutaneous tissue. And of course, the fat layer till you encounter the fascia lata. So let me just do this dissection, reposition my self retaining retractor and then I will join you back. So this is our superficial dissection done, skin, subcutaneous tissue, fat layer done. This is fascia lata. This is the front part. This is the back part. This is the tip. Now next thing is to incise the fascia lata distally. Just and in this position you can ask your assistant to just abduct the leg to take the tension off and then just take a knife and try to just dissect it. So once you have dissected, just let me control this uh, bleeding then I will. Now once you have got this rent, now the next thing is to keep uh, dissecting it uh, and try to separate the gluteus uh, maximus from the TFL. So my incision will keep going on the top and it goes slightly anteriorly and this is what is called the Gibson uh, approach or Gibson interval. So just keep on dissecting it, keep it, keep on dissecting it here and then you will find a plane which will go between the gluteus maximus and the TFL. So once you have identified that, we will reposition the self retaining retractor and once I have repositioned it, I will join you back. So we have repositioned our self retaining retractor in the front and in the back. Now this is the vastus lateralis, this is all the gluteus medius and overlying on the top is the bursa. So because Prashant is in the way of uh, me, so I am just taking this bursa off, I am just dissecting the bursa and trying to expose the gluteus, this guy has got really really thick bursa. So just to orient you, this is uh, your vastus lateralis, this is of course your um, greater trochanter, all this is your hip abductor that is gluteus medius from here to here. So now, um, while 
we get our leg internally rotated as you do it in a hip replacement. We will try to keep the GT parallel to the floor and then we should be ready for our osteotomy. I have marked uh, this osteotomy site and I will try to be parallel. Now you can make osteotomy either straight forward or you can make a step cut osteotomy uh, which some people will uh, prefer uh, as they believe that it increases uh, the risk of union. Um, but in my experience even a straightforward osteotomy does the job so the next step will be to do the osteotomy. So try to keep this saw parallel and then start doing the osteotomy. So that like uh, it's done. So next I will take a broad osteotome and then I will just try to complete the osteotomy. I think still a little bit left. So I am just going to um, use a hammer and try to just and you will you can hear the crack and um, that is your osteotomy done. So I am just going to lift it and then I will join you back. So now the osteotomy is done. So I am just going to lift this and once you lift this, you can see this is complete. So I am just going to lift all this uh, including vastus lateralis and all this gluteus maximus, sorry medius in the front. So while Kushwant is uh, helping me lift, so I am just dissecting first posteriorly so that I can visit this uh, vastus lateralis in the front and the same way once I have done it here, I will continue my dissection and try to lift it from the front. So we have released it inferiorly, I am happy there. So I am just going to put my knife and then try to continue my dissection in the front and then try to lift it, this whole gluteus medius from the front to expose our anterior capsule. This is all lifted. So this is how it will look. Now once you have freed inferiorly and superiorly, you will be able to flip this and this opens like a book and then you can use your retractor or whatever you want to use to keep it in the front and then your next step will be to identify the capsule uh, in the front and do your capsulotomy. Now this is our osteotomy done. So our GT is behind uh, this uh, Langenbach. Um, this Langenbach is retracting our uh, uh, tensor fascia lata and this is the gluteus maximus. So now what you can see now here is, uh, this is uh, where your hip will be in this direction. Now either in the initial approach try to reflect the minimus, here we have reflected using you know the periosteum little bit of minimus. Now what you see now this from here, this is the inferior aspect of the femoral neck, this is the superior aspect of the femoral leg. Now I will mark the osteotomy and I, I will mark the capsulotomy and I will show you how to make it. So the first limb of the capsulotomy will be the vertical capsulotomy, so this will be in the center. The second limb will be going inferiorly and the third limb will be going superiorly in this direction. Uh, it's very hard, the marking pen is not working. So basically, if I can take a small forceps, the first osteotomy will be in this direction, sorry called capsulotomy. So when you do the open the capsule, this will be a first limb. Then the second limb will be like this and the third limb, you know this second limb will be starting from the inferior aspect, going inferiorly. The, sec the third limb will be from the superior aspect going across in this direction. So let me make my first uh, incision first. Now one thing you have to be very careful when you are doing this is you do not want to be damaging the labrum. So if you are dissecting close to the acetabular margin, just go very, very superficial and open it gently. And if I can have a small retractor please and I will join you when I have a small retractor. 
So just to show you, if I reposition my a small self-retaining retractor, you can start seeing the femoral head. And what I mean is when you are close on the superior aspect, stay away from the labrum. So this is your first limb. The second limb is going in the inferior direction. So this is your second limb. And I will take something like a one o vicral and put a corner stitch and then I will reflect it. So first limb, second limb, just lift it up and just dissect inferiorly. And try not to use the cautery in this area. So this is our second limb. So Kushwant can hold this for me. And third, if you can suck this for me please. So I can see this is the labrum. So I am just going to go superiorly just gently and open the third limb. This is the third limb of the capsulotomy. So let me have another vicryl. So let me put some vicryl and I will reflect it Give and then we will, we will give some wash and then you will be able to see better. So we will just give some wash. Can I have some saline please? And once you wash it, you will be able to see. Now, if you have got an isolated 15 type for a fracture, all you need is to dislocate it and then fix it with a Herbert screw. However, if you have a posterior wall fracture or posterior superior wall fracture, like in this case, you need to address the intraarticular fragment first, fix the head, and then proceed with your posterior fixation. Now you can see everything, uh, you can see this is the labrum, this is uh, the capsule, this is also the capsule, we can see the femoral head. Now if we externally rotate the head, we should be able to dislocate and if you just put this back in the figure of 90 position, you should be able to uh, get the head out. Now you can see the head is nicely subluxed, but the unfortunate news is that this guy has got a really bad fracture of the femoral head which we need to address it. Now your next step will be to extract the head component from the astabular area and then try to fix uh, this head with the Herbert screw. So we will extract our uh, loose femoral head and then we will fix it. So now we have uh, put our self retractor. This is the femoral head. This is the remaining part of the femoral head inside the astabulum and though this injury is 20 days old that adds to the challenge. So what we will do is we will use some kind of homan um, or ring handle spike to just elevate it and then take it out and fix it. So now we have done everything that we need to do. The hip is reduced. We have fixed the posterior wall. Um, if you are addressing the posterior wall, do not uh, put the GT back because uh, you may need this helps a great deal in having superior access. So the first thing we do is tighten the corners. So I am just going to take number one vicryl. So do this inferior corner first. Cut it for me please. And then I will suture the superior corner. And once I have done these two, I will put some interrupted stitches and I will show you how it looks. Now this is our uh, capsulotomy closed. Now next step will be to just take this out and if you get this GT, oppose it and reduce it and fix it with two or three screws. So that will be your next step. So I use uh, three guide wires and then I am going to use a 4 mm partial threaded screw. So I am just going to drill uh, each of them and then put the screw. Now this is our GT fixed and now you can see it's quite stable and even if I want to move it, uh, it can be quite stable. So this is internal rotation and this is external rotation. So now after this, it is just routine closure. I'm not going to show you that. So this is how you do a safe surgical dislocation of hip. So viewers, this was a demonstration of how to do a sur safe surgical dislocation. Now you need to do this procedure for an isolated Pipkin type fracture of femoral head or uh, occasionally or commonly uh, when you have got a femoral head fracture uh, along with a posterior wall or posterior superior wall fracture. Now if you follow the principles, you should be able to uh, do this uh, procedure safely and through this, 
you should be able to address uh, intra-articular fracture of a femoral neck. So I hope you find this video useful. Uh, please give us a thumbs up. Please do subscribe and do share our channel. Thank you.